Hey guys, I'm Anakin. I'm a Tekken pro and a Red Bull player. I'm a part of the fighting game community, a scene that grew out of one-on-one -on -one battles and rivalries in video game arcades. We're gonna take a look at some of America's most iconic arcades for the FGC. In New York City, deep inside Chinatown, was the legendary arcade, Chinatown Fair. It got its first arcade cabinet in the 70s, and by the late 90s, it focused heavily on fighting games like Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom, The King of Fighters, Soul Calibur, and my personal favorite, Tekken. People inside the fighting game community know Chinatown Fair as the top arcade on the East Coast that bred champions beginning in the late 90s with Eddie Lee, Justin Wong, Arturo Sanchez, and countless others until it closed in 2011. To learn what set it apart from countless arcades and how it became the East Coast hub for the newly forming FTC, we're gonna hear from four players who were there. Arturo Saban Sanchez has been placing in top tournaments and shaping the FGC for 20 years. Joe, Long Island Joe, Charamelli, placed top eight at EVO, the largest FGC tournament in the world. And Josh, Nerd Josh, Jodoin, Chris Craymore Landon were both phenomenal players who spent more than a decade fighting it out with the best of the best at Chinatown Fair. I was in New York City, there were so many arcades, I got to see the whole boom of it. Of course, every arcade has like a different feel, but Chinatown was more hardcore than the other spots. They were trying to run tournaments, they were a step ahead of the curve and building the competitive scene. That was, I think that was the main difference. All I knew was there was this arcade and the best were there. And I went there and I was just completely packed. It was like 110 degrees in there. No AC. The Had it snow. Before they got DDR. <laughs> Had it Had smell. The garbage, <laughs> the garbage cans were still inside. No AC, so it smelled great. Had it smell. I could still taste the smell, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Stepped into Chinatown, it was loud, it was colorful. A lot of it was crowded, a lot of people packed back to back. There would be like 50 heads all packed around two cabinets. Couldn't see, couldn't see shit. Like you mentioned, everyone was taller than me. Yeah, so I was If you saw the life bars and you yeah. knew enough about the game and how people played, you would have an idea. Of yeah, what was exactly. Going on. The machines had the, the plastic drilled into them so you can sit the yeah. quarters yep. on yeah. the plastic, tokens on the plastic. It was like something I've never seen before, but I remember being upset. I'm like, this is it? Like, this is Chinatown Fair. This is it? This little dingy thing right here? I think location had a lot to do with it. So it almost took the same amount of time to get to Chinatown from wherever you lived in New York City. And if you were in the Bronx scene, you would take one train to go to Chinatown, take like 45, 50 minutes. And if you were from Queens, it'd take the equal amount of time. So literally like all lines kind of just, just led to Chinatown and everybody just eventually migrated there and I, that became the spot. That arcade just like, it blew my mind how every game there had a killer that of a caliber I'd just never even experienced yeah. before. And some of these kids weren't even like speaking English or anything like that. They're just chilling. You know, they had Chinese kids or Latino kids just going at it. And, you know, I thought it was really cool that New York just had this hub where yeah. y'all could be part of any community in the city and you just show up here to yeah, play one and spot. test yourself. Like it didn't matter your shape, your size, your color, your religious belief, nothing Nobody gave mattered. No one, gave no, one, no one gave a yeah. Like it didn't matter. People all enjoying yeah. this, this one thing. Stops. Oh my god. Yeah, it feels oh, like this, right? Exactly, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you gotta be talking in my ear, though. Yeah, word, yeah. Oh, yelling. Try to start waiting to get someone yeah, angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Take up the whole. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I remember that happened at ECC to me once. We'd bump you off. Why well, beat yeah, someone one game, and then the, he was like, oh, I'm not letting this kid beat me. Just like muscled yeah. me over. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many yeah. different groups of like, yeah, hangout. Yeah. Like, there would be like the DDR community, but the DDR community kind of like split in half because there was like a mini goth community there too. And then th that was split between the anime kids and the ravers. <laughs> There's so many people that you would have to like make a pie chart. Yeah, yeah. With, like, no pie, oh no, Venn diagrams. Yeah, and just yeah Venn diagram of yeah. like everybody. And everybody's only divided by one degree of separation. Henry Sen was the manager of our Chinatown Fair. He did not own the arcade. The owner of that time was uh, Sam, who is no longer with us. Rest in peace, Sam. Thank you for your service. But anyway, he gave Henry free reign to maintain and service all the machines. And then from there, he was really networked into the community. When uh, myself, my mentor, Eddie Lee, and Henry all became friends, I was seen as a younger kid in the crowd. The pillars when I first walked in there was Eddie Lee, Justin, 
Sanford. It's art and yipes. Yeah. Art, I think it's art, 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 the, the pillars of Chinatown. Chinatown. There's so many times when I was still in Connecticut coming up, we would be like, yo, we're going to play Justin. And Justin wouldn't show up that night, but Sanford would be there when we get there and be mm. there all night. Hey, be, like, <laughs> teach us like 20 new things. He'd be like, oh, man. Sanford always had a bag of tricks. What's up, guys? Oh! I miss y'all again. I really miss all four of y'all. I'm gonna be seeing you soon. Uh, no, Josh, you owe me a, a, a Marvel Stu session. You know that. <laughs> you owe me that. Joe, you know, we could play some Sega versus Sega, Chief Fighter 5 before, whatever you like. Arturo, you know I'm being on a buff head. So. <laughs> and uh, Claymore, you're my brother. You know, we're gonna talk when you come back to New York, you know, and I'll catch up on life. Legendary. Yeah, yeah, legend right there. That is definitely a legend. Great legend. Me for the first, I'd say like three or four years, going to Chinatown, no one knew, no one like spoke to me, whatever, because I was just some random kid from Long Island that went to go play. It wasn't until I got good that people started to notice who I was and things like that, where I started to get the ins. I think the, the competition comes first. Yeah, and then yeah, the obviously. comes second. Like, yeah, you gotta respect, you, 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 gotta, you, respect, gotta, you gotta respect your opponent. You have to. Right? Who can. See, see, Joey, Joey's used to it. He adapts. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's like play, play what you're oh, given. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I told him, yo, see, I said, play your own risk, bro. Play your own risk. Play your own risk, dude. Yeah, no refunds. <laughs> oh, oh, no. So good. Oh, like a typical day would easily 12 hour day, dude. Then like all the restaurants have oh, that. Yeah. Oh, what do you want? Bubble They're tea? Open. Do you want Thai? Yeah. You want Chinese? Go get do you just want McDonald's? Wow. Yeah, do you want to go to Wohop? We're going to stick yeah. at nine. Yeah. <laughs> Those moments were really special because it was like more camaraderie. It was the moment where we get to like talk about the game instead of just playing the game. The coolest thing to me about Chinatown Fair was that it really helped me as an individual. I had a very huge stuttering problem. I didn't know how to socialize. I was very awkward. But just talking to like different people, it just helped me develop as a person that was able to just like socialize more, like be normal. I think that was like the biggest takeaway. Like even though like the competition and like the games were like super fun, the most important part is making all these friends. In the 2000s, some arcades were still doing well, but others not so great. Consoles getting bigger with online getting better and things like that. But we were still there. And we're kind of like in our own bubble. The uh, scene is kind of uh, shrinking for a bit, shrinking, 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 right? Then Street Fighter 4 comes out, basically revitalizes the scene. When 4 came out, it was, it was a different pack. players than everything. Yeah. It was like Chinatown was back again. Lines were out the door. It was yellow, right? Like a yellow loose leaf book. Yeah. Just had <laughs> names on it. Like, it wasn't even quarters. People's names written on it. People, you didn't like someone? Oh, you're like, dude. oh, I'm taking that last yeah, yeah. round. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need Man, that. Man, the 128-man tournament in Chinatown Fair. Yeah. You couldn't see anything. You couldn't see Chinatown closed, it was huge. It definitely represented an end of an era to me. I was definitely there during the last day until the end. Like, I just remember it being a somber feeling. Everybody was all kind of sad getting the last games in. You know, they said goodbye to Sam and stuff. I remember everybody asking Henry, like, you know, what are we gonna do? Where are we gonna go? And like, you know, at first Henry didn't say anything, but uh, you know. The original owner, Sam, was like close to retirement. He's like in the 70s, 80s, like he definitely wanted to retire. I understand. I just remember being really upset about it. To lose that at that time was like, damn, like now what do we do? Like that was a scary thing. Like, so now arcades are dead, like that's it? Because there's the only one that was left in New York City. Everything we've built up for is just gone. But uh, Henry, like, you know, with all his legacy knowledge that, that he had, he ended up getting another partner, Nick Chan. They ended up opening Next Level in uh, Brooklyn. And it's pretty much the philosophy of Chinatown Fair where it's like, you know, hardcore gaming, like no frills place to practice, but we breed the best players in the world. Henry really did come through, like giving us a place that was, it's as Chinatown as anyone could make it. Sam passed away before COVID. It's a, a natural death. I went to his funeral, it was sad. I knew him greater than two decades. And he was like, oh, you know, Godfather's me. It was sad to see him go, but you know, we have to move on in life. So, you know, Chinatown Fair closed also after a while and it became next level as it is today. And, you know, I'm still here, but you know, one day I'll have to move on too and everyone has to move on, you know, that's just how life works, you know. We can't escape death and taxes.
Mm. As far as what Chinatown means to me in general, like for my life, like, oh man, I've met like so many lifelong friends and, and gained so many lifelong skills just from being in there. Chinatown Fair started as like a hardcore hobby thing, but you know, the, the grand scheme of what CF brought was way more than that. The camaraderie and all the people and everything like, uh, you know, around that point around SF4, I lost one of my best friends and like, a lot of y'all around that time get, definitely got me to get me out of my own house. And I appreciate y'all and like all that stuff because just the, the common bond and everything, you know, it was like, I always try to keep a, a good touch with the new players and stuff like that because, you know, you never know who's going to come back because of how you approach stuff and true. make it fun, you know? Yeah. When I had my wedding uh, two years ago, it, I would say like literally 90% of like, my guest list, my side was all people from like the gaming side, right? It's still really cool that I'm able to kind of like keep in touch with like people that I've met on day one at Chinatown Fair. It just felt good. So I didn't think about it at the time, but looking back, it's like, wow, it's, it's like, I was definitely like in a blessed time, like around a blessed community.